actually uh, an announcement of our engagement in, the, in the Syracuse papers. Oh, wow. Look now, what's that. the date up there? December 24th, 1942. December 24th, that's Christmas Eve. Yeah, I was already a prisoner and they never, nobody knew it yet. Well, I had a, a lot of good uh, young, young friends that were, we were all single guys, most of them, uh, half a dozen of fellows, they were uh, all Syracuse graduates except one. And they came, uh, 1940, Uncle Sam decided he was gonna, uh, it was time we did something about this war, which was on a year at that time. So they passed the draft act and uh, we were eligible big time for the for the draft. So to, to cut it short, in 1941, when another chap and I, whose numbers were getting close to being drafted, uh, we said if we if we get drafted, it'll be for a year, and because we weren't in the war yet, and the uh, and they'll do with us what they want to. If we join the regular army, which was a four-year commitment, then we can we we have some choices. So we said, well, we're going to get in this war somehow, somehow, sometime, because it's just it, it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. This was eight months before we were. So we, uh, we signed up for a special assignment up to what is now uh, Fort uh, Drum, up in the Watertown area. We had uh, agreed to sign up for the, the group that runs the camp, the, the housekeeping group. The station compliment, they call it. You, yeah. you say, make sure that the, it was coal in the furnaces and the roofs on the barracks and so on, and the, the, the roads are plowed. And, uh, the, and we didn't have, we weren't supposed to have anything to do with the unit that was being trained there. So they assigned us to the unit that was being trained there. And so we were in the, in the army, not in the housekeeping business. <laughs> And I have to tell you that that was the, first, the earliest days of the 4th Armored Division, which was being born then, uh, just to, maybe a month before we got there. That 4th Armored Division became General Patton's 3rd Army Lead Division breaking out of the Normandy invasions. It was it led the, it ran across France when it came time to break that siege at in the Battle of the Bulls at the Bastogne, and rescue the the airborne guys, 4th Armored Division led the mob. And uh, this chap and I were right there with the, be the beginning of that division by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was playing in a, in a, in a GI dance band, just kind of sitting in. Uh, and it was part of our regiment. And they, were, they had a dance band within the marching band. They were playing uh, for a a, a, a dance in the, in the city of Belfast with the doctors and nurses of the 5th General Hospital, which was uh, in, in, on duty there. And I, uh, I saw this gal dancing, and I said, my God, she's a pretty lady. I said, I gotta meet her. I went to one of the nurses that I happen to know, and I said, who was that girl over there? And she said, well, that's Olga Cassiolini. And I said, that, that one, she said, well, it's still Olga Cassiolini. You want to meet her? And I said, yes, I do. So she took me over and introduced me to her. And uh, I asked her to dance, and we danced. And never went back to the band. <laughs> so we had three dates, one a week apart, and I proposed to her. And she said yes on her third date. Then I courted her for 60 days, once a week. She came out for a couple of dances to get to our camp. And then I left for the wars. I said, maybe someday I'll see you again. Maybe I won't. That's me. Oh, she, how handsome. She, she took that picture. Oh, 42. Yeah. Wow. That's one of the few times we're together, you know, that 60 days. That's part of the 60 days. Oh, how nice. And there she is. Oh, beautiful. Well, I was there 32 days, and they sent me on a, a crazy assignment that uh, where I mingled with the, uh, the Germans who were up near the city of Tunis, and there weren't supposed to be any Germans there. I got uh, me and my eight men 
got captured by the Germans. And the, uh, there was, uh, well, we got captured by the Germans about 20 miles from the city of Tunis. When the war was over, I was right in the middle of Germany, crossing the Elbe River from the Russian side to the American side, and it was VE Day. Mm -hmm. And I was back to the American lines, escaped from the Russians. Crawled out of the barbed wire and ran <laughs> with another guy. Uh, the exciting time. The, uh, and I started to find, find out where she was, because I, I, I knew that she was in Europe someplace, but I had no idea where. So the, the Red Cross was able to put in a, a call to the American telephone exchange in Paris, found out she was way over in Alsace-Lorraine where she had been in the Battle of the Bulge and got wounded and uh, that's where she was. And I, we talked on the phone. And they gave her five days detached service to come to the hospital where the, the, at this camp where I was. And we decided that three years had gone by and we'd only courted for 60 days, we still wanted to get married. So we did. We got married in 48 hours. We took off. And it, it lasted 53 years. When you were uh, a student at Syracuse, you met another lady <laughs> in uh, 1936. Yeah. But you didn't see her until some 60 years later. Uh, that's about right. She, uh, We were inseparable for two years. And I was a senior, she was a sophomore. And uh, I stayed around, of course, did any graduate work, so she stayed around. She was two years behind me. And when I got done in 38, that's when she transferred, left Syracuse and went to Wellesley. And, and she graduated from Wellesley in 1940. And I saw her once in maybe 19... 42, I think probably for a Colgate game. Didn't see her again until 1949, after, during which time she was married and had a youngster, and I was here married and had a youngster. I saw her 1949 for an afternoon, and then I didn't see her again until the year 2000, which is what, 50 years later? More than 50. And she had survived to two husbands who passed away and she had two grown daughters and we looked at each other and said my goodness we both remembered Syracuse University in 1936 and we got married just quickly and that lasted nine years and she passed away she was a very pretty girl but uh, as I'm a, a, a long time uh, Syracuse football fan but when I started as a freshman at issue in 33, 1933, uh, from then on up until right now, I have been a very regular attender, except for the war years. But even one of those war years, 1943, uh, Syracuse dropped football, so I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I've never missed one in the Dome at all since it was built in 1980, not one. Uh, I've missed uh, three, I think, uh, since including 1946 up until the, the Dome was built. And uh, I often uh, went by myself. I had four tickets. <laughs> and, uh, my wife uh, uh, liberated a GI blanket. She was an army nurse, as you know. And she brought home a, a GI blanket, which we took to games. And in good weather, we sat on it as a pillow. And in the inclement weather, I took it as a, around, around our shoulders or uh, when it was just me <laughs> from, uh, from top to bottom.